let's say that you are given this recurrence to solve t of n is t of n minus 2 plus n square and we want to solve for the asymptotic complexity of t of n we want to get both upper bounds on the asymptotic complexity and lower bounds that is we want to express t of n as big O of some function and big omega of some function and preferably we would like our bound to be a tight bound and as always we are given that t of n is constant for small values of n say less than or equal to 2 so we could try to use the recursion tree method over here we could say that we're going to start off with a single node in the recursion tree t of n which will get replaced with n square with one single child t of n minus 2 then in the next iteration t of n minus 2 will get replaced by the node n minus 2 squared with a child t of n minus 4 that's because t of n minus 2 is going to be t of n minus 4 plus n minus 2 squared if we replace n by n minus 2 throughout this is what we'll get t of n minus 2 is n minus 2 squared plus t of n minus 4 then in the next iteration t of n minus 4 will get expanded into n minus 4 squared with a child t of n minus 6 and this will continue until at the end we'll end up with this chain of values n square n minus 2 squared n minus 4 squared and so on until at the very end our problem size will fall below this threshold which is 2 and at that stage the leaf node will have some value c whatever the value of t of 2 or t of 1 or t of 0 is wherever we end now instead of representing this in the form of a recursion tree we could have just written this out linearly in the same line so for example we could write t of n as t of n minus 2 plus n squared and then rewrite it as n squared plus t of n minus 2 then we could expand t of n minus 2 into n minus 2 squared plus t of n minus 4 then we could expand t of n minus 4 into n minus 4 squared plus t of n minus 6 so it's pretty much the same uh, we're getting pretty much the same chain of nodes except that instead of depicting it diagrammatically in the form of a recursion tree since this is a simple chain we can write it along a single line and at the very end we'll have this whole series which ends at some constant value whether it's t of 0 or t of 1 or t of 2 that's, that's not uh, important because it's not going to affect the overall complexity of uh, t of n now some textbooks call this approach as the method of backward substitution It's not really different from the recursion tree method that we've seen. The only difference is that we are depicting the unfolding of the recurrence equation non-diagrammatically in a single line. And in each step we are unfolding the recursion by one more level. So we are taking t of k and then expressing t of k in terms of t of k minus 2 and substituting t of k minus 2 plus k square in place of t of k and we continue doing this until the recursion bottom so we are going back we are starting from n and in each step we are going back by one by one more level where we reduce the size of the subproblem by 2 so we start from n, we go back to n minus 2, then we go back to n minus 4, and so on. And when we go all the way back to the base case, 
will have an entire series such that t of n is basically the sum of this series. So how do we solve for t of n here? We could try to exactly calculate the value of this series, this summation, and express it in terms of the theta notation. But we are going to do something simpler here. We are going to try to directly develop upper and lower bounds for t of n, which won't require us to exactly calculate the value of this summation. And the technique that we'll use is something we have used many times in previous problems. Uh, let's first look at the upper bound. So we're going to try to prove that t of n is theta of n cube, which will require us to prove both that t of n is big O of n cube and that it's big omega of n cube. Focusing on big O of n cube, or focusing on the upper bound, it's easy to come up with an upper bound for this series. We can just replace this whole series by the first term because this is a decreasing series. It's not really a geometric series, it's not a decreasing geometric series, nor is it a decreasing arithmetic series. But nevertheless, it's a decreasing series and the first term is the largest term, the last term is the smallest term. So we can say that this series is going to be less than or equal to a modified series where we replace every term in the original series with the first term. So if we do that, let's take this whole series, the last term is C, and let's replace every term by the first term. And the resulting series will be n square added to itself approximately n by 2 times because in every term the value of the number being squared is 2 less than the previous value. So if we start from n, it will take us approximately n by 2 steps to come down to somewhere close to 0. So there will be approximately n by 2 terms in this series. So the value of this modified series will be n square multiplied by n by 2, which is half n cube. And this is going to serve as an upper bound on t of n. So we can say that t of n is bounded from above by this constant multiple of n cube. And so t of n is big O of n cube. This is a common way in which we get an upper bound on a, on, on a given series. We see which is the largest term in the series and we replace every term by that largest term and that way we get a simple upper bound. Now the question is, is this a tight upper bound? Because it's possible that t of n could be say a quadratic expression in n, in which case it would certainly be big O of n cube, but it would also be big O of n square. So is this a tight enough upper bound? For that we have to see whether we can prove that t of n is big omega of n cube as well. If it turns out that t of n is also big omega of n cube, then this upper bound is in fact going to be a tight bound. So to derive an, a lower bound on the series, we will again use a trick that we have used often in prior problems. Let's consider this whole series, n squared plus n minus 2 squared plus n minus 4 squared and so on. It ends at this constant value called c. And if we look at the middle term of this series, the middle term of this series is going to be n minus n by 2 squared because the first term is n minus 0 squared, second term is n minus 2 squared, the third term is n minus 4 squared, and will be approximately ending around somewhere around t of 0. So in every step or in every term, the value of the number being squared is going down by 2. And finally, it, the, the value being subtracted will become large enough to be approximately n so that we will end up with a subproblem of small enough size close to 0. So there will be approximately n by 2 terms in this series and the middle term is going to be n minus n by 2 squared. Notice that the value being subtracted is increasing by 2 in every term. 
So if there are n by 2 terms in this series, the middle term is going to be the n by 4th term. And the value being subtracted in the middle term will be twice of n by 4 because the value being subtracted is increasing by 2 in every term. So in the n by 4th term, it's going to be twice of n by 4, which is n by 2. So this is the middle term. Now what we'll do is we'll divide the series into two halves around the middle term and we will use that old trick where we'll ignore one half of the series. So let's just drop the terms in the right half of the series. The resulting series is going to be smaller than this whole series. It's going to be a truncated series and this is going to be this is going this is how it's going to look like. It's going to start from n square it will have all these terms but it will stop at n minus n by 2 squared which is the middle term of the original series but now it's going to be the last term of this truncated series so it's n by 2 squared now this is a trick that we've used often in order to derive a lower bound for t of n we often split this series around the middle term and then drop either the left half or the right half depending on what's more convenient and after dropping one half of the series, we can now replace this whole series by the smallest term in it, which is n by 2 squared. Notice that the terms are decreasing here. So if we replace every term by the last term or the smallest term of this truncated series, we are going to get another modified series, which is going to be even smaller than this modified series. So let's replace every term by n by 2 squared and we'll get n by 2 squared plus n by 2 squared and so on n by 4 times and so the value of this new modified series is going to be n by 2 squared multiplied by the number of terms which is n by 4 and the result is n cubed divided by 4 times 4 which is 16 now we couldn't have just replaced every term in the original series by the smallest term because if we had done that we would have definitely got a lower bound but it would have been a very loose lower bound so let's say we had replaced every term in this original series with c the last term which is the smallest term then we would have got c plus c plus c plus c and so on n by two times so from that we would have obtained the result that t of n is greater than or equal to c times n by two which we which would have implied that t of n is big omega of n because it's greater than or equal to some constant multiple of n. But by first splitting this series around the middle term, we get an even tighter lower bound because the middle term is not a constant. It's actually a function of n. It's in fact proportional to n square. And every term before the middle term is proportional to n square. So, uh, or, or it has an asymptote, every term to the left of the middle term has an asymptotic complexity of theta of n square. So if we add up n by 4 such terms, there will be another factor of n multiplied with the asymptotic complexity of every term. And so we get n cube. So because we had n square in every term, and if we multiply it by the number of terms which is also proportional to n, we are now going to get a lower bound that is proportional to n cube. So t of n is bounded from below by this constant multiple of n cube and so t of n is in big omega of n cube. Now this shows that the upper bound we had obtained which was big O of n cube was also a tight upper bound because we also obtained a lower bound of big omega of n cube. So Combining both these results, we can now say that t of n is theta of n cube. So we wanted to basically solve for this recurrence and we have actually obtained a tight, an asymptotic tight bound on t of n and that's theta of n cube. We did so without exactly computing this series 
we did not have to derive an expression for the exact value of the summation and then drop the lower order terms and ignore the constant coefficients. So although that could have been one a possible approach, but we did something easier. We independently derived an upper bound and a lower bound of n cube and thus proved that t of n is sandwiched between two constant multiples of n cube and so t of n is in theta of n cube. 